And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Wednesday, August 10th, 2022. What a difference a day makes, eh? It was an incredible day. Um, an extremely profitable trading day. And it was interesting to boot. So we saw pretty much what I said yesterday, right? I would not be surprised if we walked in and that number comes out. And no matter what that number shows, they push the buy button and they push the buy button and they push the buy button. And that's exactly what happened. Now, the number itself, this, the consumer price index declined three tenths of a percent. I don't think about three tenths of a percent. Maybe it was up to five tenths of a percent. And they grabbed this thing as if it was oxygen itself and they couldn't breathe. It is so stunning to see how the markets react to take on the, the message that's being sent out. Boy, this did nothing but reinforce how every pundit was out there saying, we've bottomed, the Fed's going to relax, this is what's happening, inflation's under control, blah, 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 bullish, bullish, bullish. And they bought it. They bought it today. Now, that doesn't mean that today was not bullish. It was. The trade action was. And for example, some of the stuff that just really kind of made me giggle. I'm like, yesterday in this stock, in NVIDIA, they closed it up 10. Yesterday, they had it down 10. They had it more than down 10. Because NVIDIA was going to make $2 billion less than what the street was expecting. $2 billion. Well, today, they're like, oh, who cares? But the reason that today really kind of NVIDIA went up, because it didn't stay up. I mean, there were, it was floundering, going all over the place, was because NVIDIA is a part of the, of the um, NASDAQ. I believe it might also be in the Russell. And therefore, when they're buying a basket of the stocks in the NASDAQ, NVIDIA goes along for the ride. Then you've got all these option traders. And then you've got all this and that. And the next thing you know, you're up 10. And if you were a, you know, a corporate in NVIDIA and you know, it's like, we put out a warning and they're coming in and do this, it's giving them an opportunity to sell. Because the truth is, those numbers will come out on the 24th. And so if you don't think that, that, that you're going to be here, well, now you're getting an opportunity. And I don't think they can call it inside trading because you came out and said it, and then you sold it after. Anyway, when I'm watching some of the things that they were doing, and the other one, AMD. AMD they had down at 92 yesterday. Now they got it back almost at 100. Why? Because AMD is a part of the basket. So when they buy the basket, all of the stocks, AMD goes along for the ride. Apple, look at this, going for 170, which I tell you right now, look for that on Friday. Look for them to get it to 170 and get it to close up there. And Apple itself is an amazingly bullish chart. And I'm just because I'm not supposed to talk about the NASDAQ, but I'm just going to show you Apple. Check it out. That is a steep climb on a wall of worry. Against, these aren't great earnings. And what, they pay 23 cents a dividend? They're a $2 trillion company. That's all you can afford? Is that many outstanding shares? I don't know. But they are rocking this world. Now, a lot of people want to compare this to the NASDAQ, and I get that. I get it 100%. But percentage-wise, it's much higher in this rally than the NASDAQ or the S&P. Much higher. 
So yes, it continues to lead the NASDAQ and the S&P higher. But I think this one too is reaching. This is the daily. It just turned up again today. There's a gapped up higher. And that would be interesting if this gets left. There's a little tiny island right there up all by itself. We'll see. But the markets to me are getting pretty close to getting ready. But now that this is up here, you know they're eyeing this. They're eyeing that all-time high up at 183. And it's like, we're so close. We're so close. It's like, yep, you are. And for all I know, I've marked this a five and a five and a five. I might have to back it up and realize that maybe this goes up here. And then this is the, the four. And this is the five. Now, I took a look at that on the NASDAQ just to make sure, guys, that you didn't think I didn't do it. I do. I do. I do. And I'm going to just pull it out to that weekly chart and talk about it for a second. Don't think that I didn't go, well, wait a minute. What if? So I thought, okay, I'm going to move that three up to here. And this would be the four. There's the one. Even if I took that tail off, there's the one. And see where it is? It exceeded. So that went real quick. But I just want you to show, or I'm, I want to show that, yes, when we're doing Elliot, I have to balance it out. When you're seeing them just come and come and come and take it and take it and take it against all odds. Now, the other thing that I want to bring in right now to talk about is, number one, I will go and check to make sure that, that I'm still confident of the previous count, which brought us up to that all-time high. And if I still am, which I am, based on this overlapping, that leaves this five in place. So, and that leaves all of it in place for right now. Oh, excuse me, for right now. Now, what other points that I kind of would like to bring in is that when we're taking a look at this particular count, and if indeed I have to now continue to give at least a 50-50 probability that this count or this count is actually going to come into force. 50-50. It has to be right now. In fact, I might start leaning it a little bit more towards this count. Now, it doesn't mean I'm wrong. It doesn't mean that this is, this is wishy-washy. It's just telling you what the market is doing, and the market is the only thing, entity, that's going to let us know what's up, where am I going, how's it looking, et cetera, et cetera. So both counts still stay firmly in place, and right now, I still got them at a 50-50 probability of one or the other being in, in tune right here. But one thing that I am looking at is if indeed this is the beginning move of a larger primary B wave counter trend rally, then I'm going to ask that we all go and we really take a look at some of the things that Robert Prechter wrote there in his book, The Elliott Wave Principle. If you can get your hands on some of the work of Hamilton Bolton, or some of the work of R.N. Elliott himself, when he talked about the characteristics, he talked about the personalities of these different waves. B waves are sucker plays. And I S-U-C-K-E-R, sucker plays. Because they're going to move contrary to what reality will be telling you. So what is reality telling us? That inflation still is around. Albeit, we had a decent figure in terms of it didn't increase, it decreased slightly. And if it decreased slightly based on um, based on when it 
it's crude oil has come down. So gas prices have come down. The United States has started to dip into the reserves and push more oil out into the market. So that part has come down. Food has not. Food doesn't look like it's going to. Other items, folks, go try to buy lumber. Go try to buy electrical equipment. Go try to buy um, um, other forms of energy besides gasoline. Inflation is still there. Inflation is still kind of going. Inflation is still being priced through the different corporate and now retail chains. So when you're looking at this and you're reading things like I think so seeking alpha and other things, I've seen stuff where it's like people definitively saying, no, bottoms are in, inflation's under control, interest rates are going down. Bah, 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 bah. And I don't think that they really get what they're talking about. I have to be honest with you. Yes, interest rates. The, the uh, yield curve has inverted. The long end of the curve, those rates are ticking down. The short end of the curve, those rates are continuing to tick up. And again today, I got more results. The 13-week T-bill, up. All of them, up. But like the 10-year holding firm. So as these auctions come out, we can see that it's inverted. And I can't tell you how long it's going to be, but I can tell you that it's not really in line with reality. So read about a B wave. Read about what it can do. Here's the other thing I will add. Regardless of which count, is going to actually play out, then, then if it's going to be this B wave, then we got a B wave coming down, and then we have the C wave going up to complete the primary B, and then what comes next will, will, shake, will shake the markets and really shake out a lot of people. And it doesn't necessarily have to happen. So again, I want to put into perspective, I continue to do and provide my interpretation of Elliott Wave as it is applied to the NASDAQ and the S&P. I continue to attempt to do it and then take a look. And because Elliott does not take fundamentals or the news or anything else into, into, into question or try to relate it to what's happening. We don't need to. Elliott Wave is, is the means by which we can measure the energy, the psychology, the emotional behaviors, the emotional responses of traders. That's who really produces the waves. Not necessarily someone's good earnings. It's how do you interpret those earnings? How do you feel about those earnings? What do you want to do with those earnings? That's what creates the waves. So having said that, I have to stay fluid because the count is active. It's not like I can set this up and say, well, I'm not going to change it. If the market never traded again, oh, yeah, I can put it all in there and tell you that's the way it is. But we're getting up every day and we're coming in and trading a live fluid market. And as long as we're doing that, we have to remain fluid in how we want to interpret that. Now, that doesn't for one second mean that you can't pull off of this low and realize, well, I either got, I've got a B wave or I've got, you know, I got something going on here and it might be a minor two, or in this case, now it might be an intermediate wave A. And you can trade to that. If you can see it start, and once we were going through this triangle, once the triangle was out, which is all the way back to here, boom, July the 13th, you were buying for upside. And you could position. You could position as well. Use options. You can position and go buy Amazon. You can go buy Google. You can go buy these stocks. Whichever ones you think are really going to participate in any kind of rally here in the NASDAQ, you go pick it up. Go buy it and you're not missing out. To sit out 
without the understanding of knowing how you to get in or where you should be getting in, you're going to then become a victim of what they call FOMO, fear of missing out. A lot of that was today. The fear, I'm, a lot of it was pre-opening. And I'm telling you, it was like, hit that buy button and buy as many futures as you can get your hands on. That was the plan. I'm telling you, that that made me sit back and go, wow. But what a trading opportunity. So it could only last for about a second and a half because there was so much good trading and it happened so fast that you can't stop to think about, oh, gee, look what they're doing. Well, how high could it go or what's going on? You must trade the price action as it was presented in front of you and watch it zip above points of control, value area high, all of that. And the market and those order, flow, you know, your order flow charts and indicators will readjust. And it did real quick where because it ran all the way up let me come down to an hourly chart so i can show this a little bit cleaner it ran all the way up but it didn't come flying back down it stayed up here it stayed up here and it just traded and then we opened right there we traded up and we traded all the way down so what that tells me these were the pre-placed sell orders you couldn't get on a phone fast enough to say cancel 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 because once they're in place they're in place you're going to get sold and that's kind of what happened but it was tradable and if you saw this you know they go okay that was the that was the rejection or whatever but then you see the tail oh my god an hourly chart look at that tail it was the screaming buy of the day and you go back and you buy it and you trade it. You just trade it and you keep trading it. This was a down, like, then you got chopped. This is choppy, right? Red, a uh, green, red, green, red, green, red, red. Like, oh, all right. So, but tradable. And if you're not hugging a bullish or bearish bias and you're not running around trying to figure out why is that number, why was it so bullish? What's going on? Just trade the price action. That's all you need to know. And it just zipped. Okay, here we are. It zipped above the four. It zipped above the eight. It zipped above the 20. It zipped above the 200. It zipped above the 50s. Once that got done, buy it. It's gone above all the moving averages. Buy it. They're taking it up. Regardless if they take it up and bring it all the way back down, buy it, make your money. You're done before the market even opens. That's how much money was out there to be made on trading this. And then also throughout the day. So what can we say about tomorrow? Well, if I had to come in, I'm going to go back out to my four hours so I can put some uh, numbers on this. Okay, so here we are. This little guy is going to go all the way over to there. So it's got to be a little bit more. So the, I'm moving the three. And I'm moving the four. So now we're in the fifth. And that's okay, you see, because people say, well, you switch around, you do this, you do that. Really? So but not really changing the fact of what the market is doing. It's just that this third wave extended even more. In fact, I have talked about it. So be more fluid in what are the possibilities. I do try every single day to give an upside and a downside look. And then if, we should go in this direction. What I would expect the market to do to tell us that the tops are in. We got that yesterday and then it stopped. And then we got that number and that was it. It was off. It was done. It wasn't going to happen. So there you already knew. Okay. 
I'm just going to be looking for higher highs. We didn't get there. We got close, but we didn't get there. So what can we expect and what can we look for for tomorrow? Well, a couple of things that I could do to give us some indications, but boy, it could be a tough one. It could be really high. I'm just going to let you know right off the bat. We want to take a look to see what this little fifth wave can be. Well, there you have it. 50 to 618. Now, what is where are our resistance points that could stop this way before it gets way up here? One would be, I got to take that back off. I can put it back on, but I'm taking it off for right now. So let's go out to the daily. And we have the daily 200 EMA at 13,555. Okay, remember that. That's now in play. One better. We move out to the weekly chart. We say, look, we got that weekly 50. And it is at 13,488 or 70. I'm going to call it. Every time I try to get there, you can see the orange is behind me, but it won't tell me. So, oh, yeah, there it is. It's at. Well, no, come on, tell me where it was. 13,488 approximately up in that area, 8488, right in that area. That's where the uh, 50 EMA is. Then we have that daily at 13,555. And then we have the SMA sitting way up here at 14,223. That's the 50 simple moving average. So that's the last thing. And here we are on a weekly chart now as well. And the weekly four has crossed above the 20. Gave us a little bit extra boost. So what we're looking for is that if things are going to get lined up, then we are going to go to the moon. That would be what the weekly chart's going to tell you. Now the daily, all we're crossing left, we're going to get the market to cross above the 200 most likely. But that's got a lot of work before all of this starts to follow through. And then we're in alignment. And the only way you can do that is the 200s on the bottom, then the 50, then the 20, then the 8, and then the 4. And you can see that right now, the 20 cruised on up through the 50s. The 8 cruised on up. And this walked today all the way up. And it's been walking the, the move up. <clears throat> So that what that keeps giving buy side pressure because the moving averages continue to indicate that the trend right now is higher. So tomorrow, this move today keeps us in line for follow through, for solid follow through again tomorrow. Now, tomorrow we have the PPI. For the life of me, I can't imagine what's going to scare them enough to sell it all the way back down on that PPI number uh, because I would expect that the PPI number is going to be a little bit of more of an improvement than the CPI was. But I don't know. We won't know until tomorrow morning. But I will anticipate that they're going to jam it up. I don't suspect that they're really going to knock this market down or, or anywhere overnight. I think that everybody else will be like, I'm not selling it. Are you selling it? No, I'm not going to sell it. And then here it sits. So we got a lot. And then on the heels of all that, so we also have jobless claims tomorrow, and that might toss a little bit in. If there's, you know, if the jobless claims numbers have really gone down and there's not that many people filing for unemployment, it would go along with what we got in the employment situation for July and that we got last Friday. So that could be a setup as well. And so we got all this stuff coming out. And so this because of the CPI, this because of the unemployment. They don't match. They don't match. But this is, we've been waiting, we've been waiting, now we're all coming in. Whatever. But what I'm thinking of, that's a four, we got a one, a two, this is three, we got a four, we got a five, and I would just, I would, Pretty much almost guarantee we should get above 13,419. We should start heading up to 13,488. 
ish in that neighborhood. And if we break there, we're going about 13,500 and probably up to 13,555. We will go and give a test to that um, daily 200. Now, downside, it has to be mean, ugly, and nasty to give us any signal that we're all done going up for now, and now we go down. Again, I'm not bullish. I'm not bearish. I don't have a bias. So I'm just giving you what I would be looking for if the market turns and starts to go down. If it's just doing a pullback, it's going to come down and hold the four or the eight and maybe the 20. And then rally again. But if they're going to come up, we make a new high and the market rejects the highs and then rejects the move, then we're going to start to come down. And for, let me go to the hourly chart, makes it a little bit cleaner. Let's open it up. Okay, obviously breaking the four shouldn't be a problem. Breaking the eight, breaking the 20, breaking the 50s, breaking the 200s. That just brings us back, guess where? To 13,000 yet again. So, remember what I said yesterday? That this gets left as, as, a, as a three. I mean, I could stretch it and make it a four. Uh, a five way, but I did was uncomfortable doing that. So it got A, B, C, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. Five of three, four, five. Let's give it a shot. We're still in the process. Don't get overly stretched in one way or the other. Uh, it is all going to come through. Play the price action. Play the your points of control, your value area high, your value area low. They readjust all day long as the market is trading. They they will continue to show you where the value is going to be found. So in other words, value, what is it? That's where the buyer and the seller can meet. So we're working on a supply and demand process, right? That's really what we're trading. And when the demand is from the buyers that they need and they're, they're buying, they're buying, they're buying, well, they need to go find that value area where the sellers will be willing to sell it to them and get their order filled. And they will continue to push until that order is filled. That's what the computer is set up to do. That's what the order is. And it might even have a limit Buy it up to that point. Most often, that point is a point of control, a value area high, an extended value area, and the naked point of control. All of these things, they come into play. It really will benefit you to spend some time learning about an order flow profile, market profile. And it's all a part of market profile, which is a lot of times people say, what are the X's and the O's and all that stuff? Because they're little boxes, but they're very important. It shows you volume. It shows you aggressive buyers versus just kind of buyers moving in and out. And it shows you aggressive sellers. It shows you where traps get set and then triggered to both the sell side and the buy side, where sellers are trapped down and buyers are trapped up. And often when those happen, they may pull back initially, but often they will go back up and release what it's got left there. Just saying, this is how the markets react. So knowing that and putting it to your advantage is real important to successful day trading. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. It was a really kind of exciting day. Um, a little bit too much at points, but... Uh, hopefully everybody did well. Uh, have a great evening. Tomorrow will be uh, on Thursday again. We have the PPI and uh, jobless claims. Have yourself a great evening. Next update will be on Thursday the 11th.